first person shooters have been around for as long as I've been alive and honestly a little longer. The genre is loved by many and hated by many in some cases. Nowadays when you say the words first person shooter you'll probably think of games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, Halo. These series have had a long life and some of the games in these franchises hold a special place in gamers hearts rightfully so. Games like Black Ops, the Modern Warfare trilogy, Bad Company, Halo Reach. For me there has always been this one series that I've always felt was incredibly underrated. I'm talking of course about the Metro series. I played the original version of Metro 2033 back in 2010 and although I loved it, I quickly ended up forgetting about it due to both being very young and having a short attention span and having a sane amount of games in my library at the time that I hadn't finished. I then found a physical copy of Metro Redux in an extra vision in my town, recognised the name and bought it. Even if I hadn't played 2033 before, I still think I would have bought it considering that the Redux was only £15 at the time. £15 for two full games, Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light. It was insane. Needless to say I fell back in love with the series and ended up reading the first book actually because of the games also, be also called Metro 2033. I have 2034 and 2035 on my list to read as well, just haven't got around to it yet. Anyway after finishing last night all that time ago I was craving another Metro game after a long wait. The third instalment Metro Exodus was released this year. Pre-ordered the game and didn't get to play it on launch due to being out with friends and then dying of the flu over the weekend, however I spent my week off sick playing the newest instalment in what is honestly my favourite FPS series. But is it a good game? Was it worth the wait? Well today I'm going to be reviewing Metro Exodus in as much detail as I can. This is sure to be a somewhat lengthy video compared to videos I usually do, not by a large margin but it's just a risk that I'm feeling is going to happen so feel free to grab some food, drink, some filters, ammo, all that good shit and let's talk about Metro Exodus. The most important aspect for me in really any game is the story. I don't care if your game has the best graphics or the best sound design, if the story is weak then it compromises the entire game for me. Of course there are exceptions, I mean Dying Light had an abysmal story in my opinion but the gameplay and ambience for that game were fantastic which led to it being one of my most played games of the year. But I'll always choose a good story over everything else when it comes to games and then just hope that the devs also do a decent job in other areas of the game. I've always appreciated how the Metro games put storytelling and immersion as a priority and Exodus really is no different. In the past games, both 2033 and Last Light, they tell a story of war and ideology, they deal with themes of human nature in the new world and always played with the idea of man fighting monsters, man becomes monster, which I thought was insanely interesting. In Exodus, they wanted to tell a more personal story instead of dealing with the dark ones and fighting between different factions and ideologies in the metro of Moscow, we're dealing with Artyom, his wife Anna and the Aurora squad venturing out and essentially just trying to find somewhere to have a life, an actual life out in the open breathing fresh air with no war, no mutants, no radiation. It's a much more personal tale of a group of humans that are like family to each other trying to help each other find their way to their best life. They really did a great job in Exodus in making you connect with your squad and of course with Anna and Artyom. I definitely say this time around was the most connected I felt to Artyom which was probably the result of the more personal overall story where even though Artyom retains the silent protagonist trope for gameplay and in game cutscenes for immersion purposes, you can really put yourself in Artyom's shoes and tell what he is feeling. All of the members of the Aurora squad play important roles at different points in the story, which I loved as it really gave everyone their own chance to shine. I was impressed at how much story each of the characters had. I mean, when walking around the Aurora, if you stop to talk to a character, they will just spout dialogue filled with stories and experiences in their lives that they want to share with Artyom. Well, you are the right kind of guys. You, the Colonel, Duke, that guy did a swell job on that bridge. Yosha. How about taking a short break in the shade? No, sir. I am on duty today. Wow. <laughs> Polishing your pronunciation is a waste of effort. 
You've nobody to try it on but me. What do you mean, nobody? <laughs> I could certainly try it on the locals, or to be precise, the local ladies. They could be fond of tourists, huh? It really connected me personally with the characters as it added depth to them that would definitely have been missed other ways. Obviously, some characters got more fleshed out than others, specifically the characters of Anna and her father Miller. It was fun to see Miller have a lot more time to shine as in last light he was mostly absent but this time he is pretty much smack dab in the middle of the game's narrative along with Anna and Artyom. I really love the story of last light with the baby dark one and the battle for D6. However I definitely feel that actually this is more personal story is the best of the series and one that I was incredibly immersed in from start to finish. No spoilers but there are of course two endings a good and bad one just like the previous games in the series. Both endings for Exodus actually have their own cool things about them, but obviously you're going to want to get the good ending. Not going to spoil anything here, so feel free to look up a guide if you need to. Basically, just be a good boy, you'll be fine. I also do think you get into Exodus if you haven't played the previous two games, but I do highly recommend playing 2033 and Last Slate if you haven't already, just because of how brilliant games they are. You won't regret it. The familiar gameplay of the previous Metro games have made a welcome return with some additions that took some getting used to at first. Small things like sometimes having to hold down a button to open something which I wasn't used to at first that sort of thing. Nothing that really took away from the experience though. Overall the gameplay was pure Metro. If you've played the previous games then you'll be able to easily get into Exodus's story. If you haven't played any of the Metro games, really you could get into Exodus as well because it's not like the gameplay for the series is uniquely difficult. Some people were complaining that since Exodus took place above ground with Artyom being able to traverse the map without a gas mask, that this meant that the devs were going to ditch gas mask gameplay. It's not a massive complaint but it is one I saw a lot in, uh, whenever the game wasn't out and there was a lot of trailers coming out. They couldn't have been more wrong. Gas mask gameplay makes a return and it is still an important part of gameplay. Yes, this game is semi open world, you don't traverse one big map, but the levels for Exodus are designed to be like their own sandboxes. Take an area seen in gameplay called the Caspian Desert. Honestly, my favourite section of the game as it featured a large desert map with loads of side quests and areas to explore that you could go through at your own pace before heading to the main story mission. You can also find safe houses or outposts around the different maps featured in the game which add to the sandbox survival style of the more open areas. There are linear areas in between the large open areas of the game that are there for obvious reasons to help forward the story and develop the main characters a little deeper that might not have been possible from the devs to accomplish in the larger portions. Another reason for the Caspian Desert being my favourite section is that as soon as you have completed the Caspian Desert, the game starts to take a more linear overall approach which is completely fine, I don't hate linear games, I actually love a lot of linear games. Games like The Last of Us were very linear and it's one of my favourite games ever. Metro has always been pretty linear but gave you the option of deciding how you proceeded with the game sections. Like you could go in guns blazing or stealth through maybe not even kill a single person. But after exploring the Caspian Desert for so long and then feeling the game slowly begin to turn more linear as we moved forward felt like a bit of a bummer to me. However, I did get over it as I entered the next section of the game and started stealthing my way through, trying not to harm a soul as I stuck to the shadows that were barely present in the bright sunlight. It was still really fun. Gunplay is awesome this time around. You have a slightly bigger selection of guns in Exodus compared to Last Light, and the customization options are amazing. You have a backpack that is basically a portable workstation, I think that's even what a character in the game calls it, that you can use to make improvements to your weaponry as well as craft new gear like molotovs, throwing knives, metal pellets for your air powered rifle, even crossbow bolts for one of my favourite weapon additions to Metro, the crossbow. You can even craft uh, filters for your gas mask and med kits which is awesome. Being able to craft filters and med kits was a lifesaver for me, especially whenever you're able to do it on the go. Overall, the gameplay was a lot of the same from last slide, but with some great additions made. The game is slightly buggy. Some bad guys have clipped through walls and stuff, and that can really take you out of the experience. I 
didn't encounter anything game breaking thankfully, but seeing people slide through walls or seeing arms jittering uncontrollably from time to time really takes you out of it. I'd still say that the gameplay for Exodus was great, it was familiar and I thoroughly enjoyed it, a lot of the same from the previous games with some minor improvements here and there. It's hard to talk about Metro without talking about the incredible soundtrack. 2033 had an amazing acoustic theme with some real morbid sounding horror scores for the more intense parts of the game. Last Light had a crazy mean theme that perfectly captured the intense action packed gameplay and horror of Last Light. Exodus... <sighs> Exodus has my favourite soundtrack of the series, I am not kidding. The main theme for Exodus is an incredibly beautiful, emotional score that fits the personal story of Exodus so well. The score for the action, the exploration, the horror and the personal moments of the game were all stellar. I have nothing bad to say about the soundtrack, nothing at all. There was actually this section of the game where I sat down with a character called Stepan and he and Artyom picked up their acoustic guitars and started playing the game's main theme together and honestly, one of my favourite moments of the game. Metro Exodus is great, it's fantastic, it's a breathtaking journey from start to finish for fans of the series and should be for newcomers as well. It is hands down my favourite instalment in the series and I know for a fact that I'm going to be replaying it countless times just like I have 2033 and Last Light. Exodus was everything I wanted it to be, a more open but still familiar gameplay experience with a personal story with characters you can so easily connect to. I hear a lot that although the devs will continue making more Metro games that this will be the last game following the story of Artium. If that is true then I'm a little sad but incredibly grateful for this amazing trilogy of games that still deserves so much more appreciation in my opinion. Would I recommend Metro Exodus? Well, you can probably guess that the answer is a resounding yes. Now remember that this is coming from someone who will happily admit to being a Metro fanboy. I'm sure there are folks out there who will watch this video who have played the game who will say this guy's a fucking moron, he's just talking out his ass, etc. But I am giving you my honest take. If I thought the game was bad, trust me, I'd be the first to complain about it. I had high expectations for Exodus, and it didn't disappoint in any way. Exodus is an incredible experience and as I said earlier, I can't wait to replay the entire trilogy over again really soon. So that was my review of the incredible Metro Exodus. I apologise this video was probably a little longer than stuff I usually upload, not entirely sure. It was probably a bit boring as well, but when I do stuff like reviews I tend to not do very well considering how often I go off script and how I talk about useless points or other issues that make the videos not so good. However, this was a video I really wanted to make and I'm glad I did. Also, gameplay in this video isn't of the best quality, I'm aware of that. I didn't actually have a capture card to record gameplay with, so I was making use of PS4's built-in video saving system, which is very useful but doesn't get great quality. However, 
I recently purchased a brand new Elgato game capture which I'm going to be using for more gaming related or commentary videos. So from this point forward anytime something gaming related is uploaded here it will be in pristine 1080p 60 frames per second so we can look forward to that I guess. Thank you so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching like I said and as always I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.